Okay. Um, hey everyone. Um, welcome to another uh, Atlanta functional for programming um, meetup uh, for Common Lisp Study Group. I'm your host, Aram Vedam. Today is a special Lisp Game Jam edition um, in honor of the Game Jam that's going on right now. I'm sorry to take about one and a half hours of your time. Um, hopefully, uh, but it's going to be a pretty interesting um, uh, discussion. Um, I'm going to have Michael Fiano um, wanna, uh, present the, the speaker. Um, before I let him, just a couple announcements for folks who are interested in giving talks and presentations. Please let either Michael and I know, um, and we'll schedule it accordingly. I'm available both through Discord, Functional Programming Slack, as well as uh, I'm usually on the Lisp uh, chat uh, room in um, Freenode. Um, so, Michael, without further ado. Hi, thanks, Ron. Um, so the game jam just began yesterday, and um, we haven't actually ever, you know, had a speaker talking about, um, you know, their their game engines. So today we're going to have a speaker talk about their game engine that's been in development for a few years now, um, and it's really polished. It's been used in the game jams in the past by several people, um, and I think it's the most complete game engine written in Common Lisp. Uh, today, our speaker is Pavel Korolev, um, who you can find on the Lisp Games IRC, as well as the Game Jam uh, forums if you need help with his game engine or you have any questions. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, here is Pavel. Thank you, Michael. So, that's me, yes. My name is Pavel Korolev. Uh, it's really hard to pronounce myself. Uh, I'm a senior engineer at uh, Whale Kids Studio, game development studio. My company name is My Games, um, and I'm a common Lisp developer. And I love games, so I did some things. Uh, I wouldn't call the thing I did or made uh, an engine. It's more like a framework, and uh, it spawned. A uh, little project, I would say, uh, to make simple games, 2D games. Uh, it's called Trivial Game Kit. Uh, by the way, my English is getting rusty, and uh, I didn't rehearse this at all. So if I don't make sense, uh, please ping me. <laughs> I'll try to rephrase or something. So I apologize in advance. Uh, okay, so Trivial Game Kit. Can you actually hear me? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Uh, let's see where we start. So, it shouldn't take really long, because the framework is really simple, and uh, I hope I'll be able to explain in 30 minutes or something, maybe less. Uh, there is a getting started guide uh, for the Trivial Game Kit, so I'm basically gonna um, show it uh, leave in REPL. Uh, I won't follow it uh, exactly, but I might pick there <laughs> for references if I forgot something. Okay, so I will share my screen. I guess if that would work. Uh, entire screen. Okay. So you might see something right now. Do you see a REPL? Should I make it more visible? Um, I see a REPL, but can you increase the font by chance a little bit? Yeah, I can try it. I'll just uh, try to do that. Uh, what's that? The plus? Uh, no. Uh, where's my... No. Uh, I actually forgot how to do that in... It's control X uh, plus. Or X control uh, plus. No. X. Well, ah, okay. Plus. Where's my? No, that's not plus. I it, I think it's equals on a on a, you know you. Uh, yeah you right. Uh, no. Ah wait. Oh yes, that's actually okay. That's how it works. Uh, that should work. Uh, oh, that's perfect. Hello. Okay. Cool. Should work. Okay, let's next screen. Uh, is that no? 
No. <laughs> uh uh-huh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, shit. Jesus Christ. Now I'm pressing all the buttons. No. <laughs> okay, I didn't think that actually would be the problem. <laughs> I, I think you have to hold control for both presses. I Yes, I do. Then I tried to, you know, maybe forgot how to... Where is my actually plus? <laughs> no way. What's what's happening? Where is okay, yeah, here it is. <laughs> okay, good. That's perfect. I guess. Uh so uh what do you do if you want to use a game kit the first time? You basically go to Google and go trivial game kit and it should game kit and it should first links should be either to the site website or to the repository and you need to depending on your configuration uh, if you don't have support for OpenGL 3.3 uh, you need to uh, basically before loading anything uh, use this uh, form or evaluate this form in REPL. But all right, then you should install the twist quick with this because uh, really hard to maintain up to date software in a quick list main list uh, and Trivial Git at the time was developing really quickly, uh, fixing bugs and stuff. Uh, so I made the specific list for the game kit and the bodge, whatever bodge is, we don't care at the moment. Uh, it's actually the engine, but we will talk about trivial game kit because it's easier to use. And it has the recommendation and it's uh, stable, uh, good things. Okay, so you just uh, basically copy paste this. I don't really need it right now, but just to show you whatever will happen. So we'll just will install the solder uh, fist. Nothing really fancy here. We can install several quick with this in parallel. Uh, so they will all exist on your machine, whatever. And uh, okay, so we, let's just load trivial think it. Uh, now it should load. It's fine. But nothing breaks, as always. Uh, but I think I didn't introduce uh, some bugs because it's jam, and uh, you know uh, we need more stuff. And sometimes I just break things, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so we loaded it, and just to be sure it works, we just can copy paste this without you know knowing whatever that is actually. So we, okay, it works. That's good. We see a window, we see a hello game dev, which we draw text, hello game dev here. Okay, that works. Now we can be sure it works on our machine and we can continue with our getting started guide. Uh, where is it? Basically, uh, there's a little link in the documentation section. Just click it. It's open a crappy site, website. Just click. Uh, getting started in the documentation section again. And here we go, that's the getting started guide. Basically, we are gonna go through it without much looking in, into it, but hopefully... Hey Pavel, can you increase yeah. your browser font size too? Uh, sure, I just need to find my plus again. Uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of... Tricky now. Ah, I can actually use the okay, wheel. Yeah, just the compression <laughs> cool. artifacts are making that very hard to read. I see. Okay. Uh, it's, ah, okay. Well, it's basically not saying much here. It's just a getting started guide, which we will kind of work through today. Uh, yeah. Sort of. Okay. So we want to make a game. Our game. What, what, what is game? It's an interactive application window. 
you uh, to have a minimal game, you need to interact with the user and display and and uh, uh, show something or uh, produce some sound to, for the user to react. Uh, so that's basically it. It sounds, or maybe not, if it's a text adventure or whatever. It's a display. Uh, you show something uh, for user to react and. The interaction itself, it's input, either gamepad or keyboard with mouse, uh, all of that is supported in GameKit. Okay, uh, I'm going to show gamepad today, uh, but it should be easy too. Uh -huh. Okay, so we want to make a game. Let's make it from the scratch. And make a file, study group. I already created a folder and linked it into a quick list local projects for quick list to uh, find this, find our project basically. Study group. So we create a SD file, uh, system, okay, almost that system. Uh, we call it study group. Uh, I won't bother I with guess it. you have to increase the yes. size for each yes. buffer you make. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Unless you do the frame font size. I forgot how to do that, though. Uh, okay, I'll just try not to forget where is my plus and to... Okay. Okay, okay that, that seems yeah, to work. Yeah, that's good. It's much better than the first time. Uh, so, I will... I will um, you should... Place documentation here, uh, license, whatever. Let's just go with uh, basics, with uh, essentials, as you say. So it depends on trivial game kit. Uh, we need it to our game to work. And uh, serial T, I'm not sure it's actually needed at the moment. Uh, components, and we just uh, create single file. Yes, what's, what, what name it? Uh, actually, it's, it's really hard to type with this. It, it's really big, the font is really big. <laughs> uh, it's harder uh, to type things in. Okay, file, what's the name? Uh, name. Oh, I'm writing uh, email now. <laughs> That's really not <laughs> that nice, yeah. File, so file is name. Okay. Uh, then we create the file main, main list. Okay, uh, just I will enhance font <laughs> size in the in the moment. Just still in oh, no no so this package and plus 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 plus. Okay, the package uh, was study group. Study group use CL. Uh, if I remember correctly, so um, you, what? You need to put up uh, a, a, an A between the K and the G package. Uh, okay, yes, true. The package. I'm not sure why I'm typing all that. I can be just be sort of complete, whatever. Okay. Uh, so, uh, local, local nicknames. Local nicknames. Uh, we could just go with the uh, game kit. A trivial game kit. Okay, I think that's that's how it works. Okay, yes. Uh, we have our package. Just let let go into it. Package. And study group. Again, we ready to go. Basically. Oh no, what's that? Study group. Okay, that's not the package. Study group. Okay. Uh. What next? We should try to. We shouldn't really, actually. <laughs> but let's try to load our system now. Did I make any mistakes? So we quell, register, uh oh, packages. No, local packages. I can use yeah, something complete. Okay, and I, just in case, quick load, study, do. Okay, so it loaded, found it, uh, and it loads. Cool. Uh, so what should we do to start developing our game? We should, often we should keep state somewhere. So, 
it's often the single place where we keep initial state basically or all of the state maybe. So we need to at least anteriorly treat the point. So we create a, a class under the macro <laughs> which will keep all our state and do all the uh, machinery to run the application uh, well that, that, that hide everything from us it will just create window uh, initialize audio uh, initialize uh, graphics context initialize input stuff whatever uh, everything is hidden behind thing I'm gonna type right now so it's dev game it's a game kit dev game uh, then we should name our game instance somehow. So we get, just go uh, study group game. Okay, so totally different from everything. Uh, I hope I don't forget the syntax. Well, that should be enough, maybe. Let's see, I just don't actually remember everything. No, what I forgot. Actually, they're gonna pick, it, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. So it's ah okay because it's similar to class. I just need to do this. Okay, because uh, we can provide uh, super classes here and it basically failed to. So it's it's, it's actually a class. If we if we macro expand it, it's, it macro expands into what a class. Okay, it macro expands into that. Whatever, it's actually a class. I hope yes. Uh, so we just compile it. What? That's funny. Oh, okay. Uh, there is this warning that really gets me because uh, SBCL is actually quite, um, how should I say that, uh, particularly specific. I don't agree with that warning at all. Yeah, that's. Uh, I find it very useful to have different different packages for yes. your flats, and SBCL will yell at you for it. So yeah. I don't agree that they put that warning in SBCL. But. Same, same for me. But I can't do anything about that. I, I mean, I can, I can, but I'm not sure I want. Okay, so this warning is okay, but there's no actually style warnings here. Uh, I know. Okay, so to start, we define the class, and actually, that's everything we need to run our game right now. It's our game. So we're just going uh, in the REPL game kit start. Start will start our game. It's uh, as a limitation and simplification uh, only one game of a true game kit kind can be run at the same time. So I can't start several games and play. It's just a limitation of game kit and bulge basically. Uh, okay, so we start, then we provide, uh, why do I have, ah, okay, uh, why do I have, uh, actually, I wonder why. It's because you're in the CL user package and that local nickname is only for the yeah. user package. Yeah, ah, right, true. Oh, no, okay, let's go there. <laughs> uh, CL in package study group. I hope it's game kit. Uh, yes, okay, start. Uh, so we just provide uh, a class name basically to of our game. The one that we just find study group game. So let's just go study group game. Okay, so let's see. Okay, that works. It uh, starts an application and it initializes all the things. Uh, well, actually, I can show you. Why not? Because we can just go with the log level debug. It's actually useful to find problems this way debug. And it will actually show what it initializes in which order, whatever, it's just audio, what is else? Graphics, that's actually that is, that's it. Well, and host stuff like window, whatever. Uh, is so that using Shimera's verbose library for logging? No, it's uh, it's no, it's uh, CL for log for CL library. Oh, okay, it looks familiar. 
Okay. Yeah, lock and seal. Uh, okay, so, yes, uh, window. We have it. Now we need to fill it with content for our users. Uh, what should we start with? Okay, we should bring something. To start with developing games, uh, you need to start small, maybe. It's, it's different approaches, but you can start small, uh, putting everything onto a screen, then splitting stuff, uh, packages, whatever. Uh, but uh, as fast as you bring something on the screen, the more uh, that will help you to develop your game because you will see the result uh, right away. Uh, okay, so um, let's draw something. So game kit, is, uh, as you remember, study group game is actually a class underneath. Uh, we can override some methods or specify methods. So there are some methods in game kit package. The method uh, game kit draw is particularly it's for drawing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we just a plain method. We go study. We specify it on specify it on our class name. Game. Uh, this method is called six times. Well, it's configurable, but by default it calls it sixty times per second. So sixty FPS. Uh, let's draw, uh, what, tree, no, uh, rectangle, uh, game kit draw, rectangle, no, it's called draw rectangle, okay, perfect, uh, then we, uh, specify the origin, game kit deck 2, so there, uh, like, mm, game kit API is not really that big, it basically contains stuff to play audio, draw something, um, little math things because you can't do graphics without any math um, at all. Yeah. And uh, uh, input, basically, that's it. Uh, so I'll explain one by one here. So draw is method that uh, holds every 60 frames in rendering thread that allow you to inject code into to draw something, okay. So draw rec uh, is, uh, there is several draw rotors here, you can see, uh, you, you probably can't see because uh, the font, uh, but there are some, like 10, maybe. Uh, so you can draw simple shapes, uh, you can draw images, you can print text, and that's basically it. So it's text, arc, line, rect, image, curve, circle, polygon, ellipse, polyline, Jesus. I'm not even using those most of the time. Okay, so we're going with the rect. Uh, we specify origin, uh, meaning, ah, okay, uh, Curial Game Kids origin is actually bottom left corner with uh, uh, what's this? Oh, we, oh, why? <laughs> I'm not sure how it's in English actually called. Oh, why? The, the axis pointing upwards. Um, so origin will be zero zero just uh, to show where it will be displayed. And then we can specify uh, what the color should be used to draw it. It's almost always two types of things. It's a fill paint. It uh, fills our uh, primitive uh, shape and stroke. Stroke paint, it's for stroking the edges of the shape. I'll display that, show that. Fill paint, okay. Where we go, uh, okay. Positions and coordinates are uh, vectors of with two elements, that's why it's called VEC2. And for colors, we're gonna use VEC4 for uh, RGB, A, basically red, green, black, alpha. Channels. So it's game, game kit, tag four, uh, specify color, we'll be black. Okay. But what will happen? We'll just compile it. No, that's field paint. Huh, it's a field. What? 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 It's a field paint. Field 
paint. Okay, so here's our error. Green uh, key made with uh, interactive development in mind. So I should actually continue this by clicking rerun flow block. Weird name, but no. It says um, the value not is number. not of type number. Yeah, because yeah, I should specify with width and height first, right? It's crazy. Okay, let's just to do this. Don't be stupid like me. <laughs> it's actually it's actually fun because it's funny because that's the API I developed myself. But, you know, <laughs> just, just forgetting it right away. Okay, so it's uh, okay. That should be good. Let's just rerun. Oh yay! We see a small, maybe too small for you, uh, rectangle, black rectangle here. So we can just uh, make it huge, or like. Bigger, <laughs> bigger. Okay. <laughs> uh, even there more we go. bigger. Nice. Yeah, you see, I can do this uh, in runtime, so I don't need to restart or anything. You just, you just do stuff here. I can just move it around, basically. Uh, you can see. Just. Uh. Oh, it's a static image. It's not really that fun. Let's just make it more, more fun. Let's just let let, let it move. Basically, uh, okay. So we're gonna use simple stuff. Basically, call some call sign and sign. But I'm not sure how it's in English actually. Okay, so we just let some. Oh, we will we'll use time. I will always use time because it's it's flowing. It's easier to use to to animate some stuff. Basically, so we're gonna just use weird function which we need. For the usual package, you can use whatever, of course. It's called real time seconds. It's just seconds really from the start of the system. Nothing. This time it will be seconds. And we just use this time in our position or origin of a console. Okay, so uh, it's. Um, ah, okay. We'll just custom cosine time, sine time. Here. Okay, you actually won't see, but it's already moving. But it's only one pixel, so that's no fun. Let's let's mm, what's it? Uh, enlarge the amplitude, I guess uh, it's called. Okay, now it's moving on X. Oh, why? Okay. okay. So here we go with the animation. That's actually nice. Should be nice. Yes, <laughs> it's really cool to see stuff you are doing in runtime. I just amazed by Common Lisp interactive development thing, and I try to support that in all my projects, basically, so I can work on stuff I work on in real time. Okay, uh, let's move it to the right, and more to the top, so we can see uh, all of uh, all of its whatever circle it makes, basically. Okay. Uh, GameKit have uh, functions to manipulate canvas. So this white thingy is a canvas, and I can manipulate it. I can rotate it, I can translate it, I can scale it, uh, and every that drawn after those holes, I'll show them in a moment, will be um, translated, scaled, and rotated too. So let's, let me show you. So basically, game key translate canvas to move canvas around. Uh, so let's just move uh, our bottom left corner to the more to the right and more to the top. Basically. Okay, so it's closer to the center. I'm not sure where the center is actually. Whatever. That's how Game Jam works, basically. <laughs> you, just, you just type uh, numbers until image is okay. <laughs> Okay, so 
Here we go. We can. Well, rotation. Actually, we can. We can rotate it too. Uh, and use time for. Oh, okay, it's rotate. Time to. Actually, you rotate it by some angle. Okay, let's just go with time. What, what, what will happen? I'm not even sure. Okay, so so it's now rotating. The thing is, uh, it's not the rectangle that rotates, it's whole canvas. So let's just comment that out for a bit. Stop our uh, rotation here. Okay, so it's solid now. It's standing still, basically. Okay, so bring it more to the center, uh, center and uh, if I compile it right now, if I evaluate, uh, it's gonna rotate because all of the canvas is rotating. So you can see it actually rotates around the our origin of itself. Uh, let's check it out. Uh, we, I can better display this, I guess, by adding another one smaller maybe actually circle why not let's just roll circle if i remember the api center so center and what radius basically yeah it's radius and the other color red okay so it's origin and we go with like i don't know okay that's no <laughs> that's not really that useful Okay, let's put a bit. Okay, maybe maybe this. So uh, nothing is rotates. And if I uncomment this and evaluate this uh, method again, whole canvas will be rotating, including the rectangle and the circle. Okay, let's let's see our little circle. Cool, it's rotating. So that's about drawing in GameKit. Uh, I actually should have uh, prepared to download some resources to show you that you can also render images and uh, playing sounds. Let's see our guide. I hope I just did put the links here. Uh, no? Okay. We, <laughs> that's bad. I'm gonna use the audio from Hello Gamepit uh, project. It's basically the project that contains the code from the Getting Started guide. Uh, study group. I need uh, Forge projects. Hello Gamekit. Uh, and here we go. Assets. Snake. Grab. Hog. Okay, let's go with this. I hope that works. Uh, hello, game kits. Uh, we need our study group project. Pop it. Study group. Uh, we have uh, three files now. We have uh, our main list file, our resource here, same group, and uh, study group A. How to define resource, how to load resources into GameKit. It's pretty simple too. You just go GameKit, define image. We want, ah, actually, that's audio, right? No. Let's load audio. I know what sound. Sound, I guess. Yes, yeah, it's sound. Uh, now, uh, GameKit operates on resource IDs. Uh, so you load resources. And, though, and then uh, use them via their IDs. Okay, you can use keywords for IDs, basically. Uh, let, let's go with this. The sound, uh, some sound. Uh, not really good in giving names. Sound. And we need to specify, specify uh, either full path or you can specify relative path. But we'll just go with a full path here. It's explained in, in depth in getting started guide, but we just can go with a full path. So we're going to use ISDF for all that, actually. ISDF, uh, system relative path name is called, I guess. Uh, then we go with our system name, which is study group. Uh, OK. 
think. Um, what's the name? Snake Rap. Snake Rap on. Okay. Uh, once I compile this, uh, it's gonna load this resource in runtime and display. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And display uh, or confirm it's loaded it in the repo. So I'm just gonna let's compile. Okay, or not? Bad pointer. That's really sad, actually, because uh, I guess that's a bug, and I shouldn't have used the latest uh, and greatest framework here. Okay, uh, maybe it's the load wave file. Or should I actually... Okay, let's try stable this. I'm not sure it's actually that stable, but I'm just gonna... So the quick list, local projects, and delete... Uh, um, botch projects from here. Botch projects is the parent project that contains through really compete with the latest updates. I'm just gonna restart... Uh, our... This process, process. Actually, I can do this restart. Okay. Gonna enlarge a bit. Uh, well, where where is system trivial game kit? What? It, it did found it. Okay. Well, quick load trivial game kit. Now it's gonna load from the stable list, I guess. I'm kind of sorry for this. <laughs> uh, what basically happened? Uh, these have two. Uh, okay, the trivial game kit is exists in two forms. It's a stable version and testing version. Testing version is basically the latest one where I, you know, continue continue support it and uh, enhance libraries behind it, uh, and sometimes things break. I hope. Stable one will work. Okay, so let's just load our system again. Well, quick load study group. Uh, we did it. And game kit. Oh, okay, let's just for the sake of experiment, we just comment that out. Game kit. Oh, okay, it should be. All oh, right, we should go in package study group. Uh, game kit start. Okay, that should start uh, without the bug actually we don't need that right now. Okay. So we are back. <laughs> Good. Uh, now I hope this will work. So we just uncomment this and evaluate this. Yes, yay! So stable works. <laughs> nice. Uh, good, I guess. Uh, what it what happened? It just said the resource loaded. If you can see this, uh, some sound. Okay, good. Now we can actually play it from anywhere with sound, it's easy to play, so we're just gonna game keep play sound. Uh, let's go, what's it, sound, some sound, some sound. Okay, I'm not, I'm pretty sure you didn't hear that, but this is actually sound here. <laughs> not sure I can share that. But that's what it takes to, you know, game keep to play sound. So I have a question. Uh, um, yeah. So um, I mean, this is this is great. Um, for uh, I haven't seen anything in the documentation related to like loading like sprite sheets and um, mm -hmm. doing like basic animation, um, uh, like with a natural image. Like once you have a drawn a rectangle, you loaded an image on it. If you're going through a sprite sheet, um, mm -hmm. is do you have any like sort of techniques or tips? Um, yeah, well, okay, sure, yeah, uh, the the one uh, thing I wanted to, uh, to um, keep with uh, GameKit is simplicity, mm -hmm. maximum simplicity, so people would start from basics, it's like, it's not the engine where you just take it and everything is there, it's, uh, it's only uh, basics that you can develop, like, you can learn game development from uh, start from the start. So mm -hmm. How to um, how to draw sprite shit is like uh, you can use a library, but you won't know what's actually happening there. Right. Uh, it's not for learning, right? 
So you just uh, how that works in game kit. You just uh, either you use library to load that into uh, into game kit because game kit doesn't support sprite sheets uh, from the uh, out of the box. Right. But but uh, how we would do this without using any library? It's of course possible. Uh, let me just load image now. <laughs> and that will actually answer, uh, I hope this will answer the question. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we have our sound here. Uh, let's use a resource, image resource. Uh, let's go to our Hello GameKit project uh, and steal asset from here too. Snakehead PNG, okay. Copy it to study group. What? Copy it to study, study, study group. Okay. Ah, okay. So we are. Yeah. You see, we have snakehead PNG now in our study group folder. Oh, directory, sorry. Directory. Uh, now let's load it into our game. Uh, so we just, no, no, let's not copy that. Game kit define what? Image, I guess. Image, yes. Image, and let's so give it. I got a question. Yes, sir. Um, so I see you're using ASDF to load the resources. Um, does Trivial Game Kit have anything that will, you know, be able to load a resource when you deploy it on image binary? Uh, yep. Uh, the, the all this if that's too advanced, you don't have to explain it. But I was just wondering. Yeah, it comes up a lot. I hear that yep. a lot. Yep. Uh, the thing is actually. Oh well, I can explain how the inner machinery works. But uh, as an overview of resource handling, when you define things, uh, it loads them in uh, into runtime image, and. Once you're building, a, I call it distribution. The game kit has a method to create a distributable archive. It serializes all those runtime resources into files of watch format, like custom format. Uh, format. What was the accent? Whatever, uh, and. When you when user starts your game, it loads those custom made files and extracts uh, extracts the resources from there. I'll show that later. Oh, once we done. It's, yeah, I'll just show how to create a shippable archive or shippable distribution with your executable there and all of the resources. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that was really a big problem. Back in the days when I was just doing jams, and uh, uh, like you, you, you don't think at first that you will stumble yeah, upon those a, kind it's of a real problems. Problem for a lot of people, like they spend yeah. all the time making the the game jam, and then like at, at the eleventh hour, they they can't figure out how to make it usable for other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is actually quite a hard thing to do, and especially hard for game kids. Because GameKit uses uh, some native libraries for reasons. <laughs> because I don't have enough time to re-implement all of the things. Uh, I used some native libraries. Uh, I can explain what which ones later. And sometimes it's really hard to to uh, to make them work on the user machines because there's so many little things that can go wrong. But I guess I figured out that enough that like 90% of the users can run the game. Uh, okay, so we are loading image to, sh to uh, I'll show how to load, display it, and how to use it as a sprite sheet, basically. Okay, some image, so we just go, I is the ABF, we'll just go, sorry for copy pasting, just, uh, okay, so that's -na 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 -na, called snake. What's that? Snake hat. PNG. 
Uh, GameKit supports several formats, basically. It's better to check the documentation. It's uh, Flag, Og, Dave, uh, uh, some other ones, I guess, too. Uh, PNG, JPEG, JPEG uh, whatever. I actually don't remember every of them. Uh, so, some image. Uh, let's load it. Let's see what's happening. Okay. Let's see. Resource loaded. Some image. I guess we can use it now. So, let's draw an image. Uh, maybe we should actually delete everything. Or maybe. Just maybe. No. Okay. Let's just draw it. Uh, game kit draw one image. Position. So, it's just like. Game kit back to zero zero image ID. So here we go with ID again. It's just the same ID we used in define image. Uh, define image ID can be any symbol, basically. I'm just using keywords because just simple. You can use any any other kind of. Well, actually, let's try this. I don't remember if this works, <laughs> but let's try. Let's just go some image as a symbol. Okay, so it's loaded too. Let's go with just some image. It's actually it would be better. I can explain it later. I guess uh, it's actually better to use proper symbols rather than keywords because names can can clash with different games. If user loads uh, several games, uh, there could be name clash between resources because uh, you know keyword packages single one shared. And you can you give your you can give IDs as a symbols in your packages, and they won't clash with other user packages. Okay, some image. Let's draw it. What what will happen? Okay, we have it. Everything else is gone because I commented it. Uh, I can uncomment later, maybe. Actually, right now, and let me just remove rectangles, I guess, and circle. We don't need it the moment, let's just draw image uh, and we will just rotate it and do all the stuff we did with the simple shapes but just in a bit oh, what did I do? ah, it's not used, okay, who? I'm just scared that when Repl shouts at me I'm always scared, what is it wrong? okay, I just, I'm just i just not using time it's just warning me okay, so you probably want, should see something here, something on the left bottom corner. I'm sure, the resolution is enough. Let's mm -hmm. just then enlarge it, I guess. Think it's scale canvas in two times. Hey, that should be better now. Very the nice. The quality, quality will go uh, to other direction, like. It, the image has its resolution, and once I'm scaling it up, it's gonna see either pixelated or uh, was it interpolated? Okay, let's let's scale it more. Uh, you could might you might start seeing the artifacts basically. <laughs> Maybe the video has more artifacts than. It's... Oh, it's almost an hour. Uh, so you might see artifacts, and we can go, it's a uh, line, by default images are linearly interpolated, uh, but it's really not what people want when they are making pixel art games. Um, we just can, wait, sorry, we can disable that in image, when in our resource we can just specify use nearest interpolation, so don't want to type that. Uh, Sure. And that will disable linear interpolation, and you should see pixels, basically. Okay. Not sure if you see that. Let's actually scale it a bit more. Even more, I can, I guess. Six times. Okay. Yeah. You probably you can, see it. You can yeah. see it. It's pixelated a little bit there. Um, yeah, if if I just if I disable that, it's going to be linearly interpolated and what's the name? Uh, okay, just linearly interpolated. Okay, let's just rotate it too, I guess. Hey, 
Uh, just let's bring it down a bit. Okay, so we have a rotating image now. So, okay, now how to use uh, sprite sheets in a uh, game kit? What is sprite sheet? Sprite sheet, sprite sheet is the big image with a little images uh, thrown around it, inside it. Like you have a sprite sheet and it different. It, it might okay. It might come in different formats. Uh, sometimes you have a sprite sheet and a file accompanying it with the uh, which points what sprite is where in that big image. So let's go. Let's assume that our head snake head is in a sprite sheet. It's not that. Let's just think of it this way. Let's stop it. Uh, now, how to how to display parts of that image, basically, in GameKey. Uh, draw image has uh, some options to display only part of the image. That's oh, actually should be a dot, okay. so part of the image. So we can specify a little rectangle within the uh, image. Let's go with that. So origin, it's a uh, origin, it's the origin of the little rectangle within an image. Uh, let's go just for now. Wait, wait, actually, we can well, whatever. Let's specify it anyway. Game kit zero zero. Okay. You don't need to, but we'll just do it for the sake of showing how it works. And uh, with and height and height. So width will be 10 and height. So what we are saying is let's draw only part of our image, which is the top, uh, no, 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 bottom left rectangle, which starts at 0, 0 and has width of 10 and height of 10. So let's do this. That will probably draw nothing. It will draw. <laughs> Draw white space uh, basically of uh, our image, I guess. We'll just let's what? Oh, stop warning. Okay, I'm just okay. Well, no, no, let's just comment it out. I don't like warnings. Okay, so we don't see anything because the rectangle is too small. Let's just bring it up a bit. Okay, ah, you don't okay. So let's scale it a bit now <laughs> six times, I guess. Now you probably will see a little small part of our image there. I guess. I hope. At least. Let's just also and civil interpolation. Okay. Uh, now let's move this small rectangle within our image so we can or switch origin a bit. Let's just. Oh, now that doesn't make really too much sense. Let's just give it more. Width and height. Okay, now you probably see eyes and nose. Right. Right. So, what you're doing here is you're just drawing part of the image, and that's what sprite sheet is. So you can load a sprite sheet and then draw it, specifying the little rectangle within an image to draw the actual sprite. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense. Basically, you can make a like a, a window and then. Uh, using user input, uh, use that to actually slide it to the next image in the in the sprite sheet to actually perform animation. That's pretty neat. Uh, okay. uh, yes, yes, kind of. Uh, so I can actually what what I can actually display. This, at, I mean, this show. this would be basically based on this piece of code here. I'm saying there's going to be a yeah. lot more work there, basically. Like, if you're moving it around, you know, say the screen, it'll be a little different. But just to keep it static, but let, let the, 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 it look like it's animating, um, you could just redraw by just updating the offset in the, in the sprite sheet, too. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try to show what animation, kind of crappy animation with this static uh, sprite sheet would look like. Uh, but basically, uh, I'll just try to draw uh, I don't remember the sign. 
Oh, whatever. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, uh, if our time. What's that? Okay. Um, depending on our time, we're going to show either this image, part of the image or that part of the image. So we just go with the uh, same window, but different origin, I guess. That's, what's, what's that? What happened? Uh, okay, that's not enough speed. Let's just move it more faster. You can see that image now changes. That's basically how sprite works. So you right. just you basically draw different parts of the image, and it's gonna be animated. Right. Okay. So I, I hope this shows all the stuff that needed to make a sprite sheet. Okay. For your game. Thank okay. You. Now, what's left? Now we need we somehow need to communicate communicate or interact with our game. So let's just bind some input. So let's just uh, what? Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. You can of course bind input in runtime. Let's do that. Uh, let's just game kit. Bind what? Bind what? Uh, button. Okay. Bind button. Uh, we we'll specify the button. Uh, all buttons supported are listed in the documentation. Basically, let's go with W. And state. State pressed. So once we press, do some action. I don't remember what's the. I hope this. It doesn't have any uh, arguments, actually. Uh, okay, so what we do? Uh, we have what? Okay, <laughs> let's have our global state. Sorry for that. Let's just def parameter. Uh, what? Position. Position. Uh, game kit vec two zero zero. I evaluated that. Position. Okay, let's use it to draw our animation, <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay, game kid X, game kid Y. Uh, so we are using using X and Y of the position vector to translate our canvas around. Basically, okay. So it's zero zero. It went to top. Okay, why top? It's the bottom left corner. Now, in our bind button, W, button W, uh, in the state pressed. Once we press it, we want to move it upward. Okay. So we just increment uh, game kit. What upward? That's why. Game kit position. Our position vector. Mm, one is not enough, so let's make it 100. Much, but whatever. Um, and just let's find it. Okay, it should be bound. So I'm gonna press W. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not hack I'm not I'm not cheating. I'm actually pressing it, so let's see what happened. Okay, it's, it's, more, <laughs> it's moving up. You can see. Let's bind, uh, let's bind W, was that S? To move it downward. It's like basically a back half. We have back half. Now we can move it downwards. So upwards, downwards. Okay, so now we can interact with our application. And let's add other directions. E, rest. Uh, that will be hopefully solved. Then we add A. Move it to the left. Back up. Okay, I just I see uh, I see a bug. Uh, let me just fix it quickly. Okay, that should be X and D should be X two. Okay, let's see. Okay, now I can move it around with my WASD configuration. So that's how you interact with the game in. Uh, Game keep. We can buy mouse too. Let's just do mouse. 
Fine mouse. Yeah, cursor. I think it's cursor actually. And action. So it will receive uh, an X and an X and Y of coordinates of the cursor basically. So it's lambda X Y. And we just actually set up position. Oh, we can't because that's why. So we need game kit X position X. Game kit Y position. Okay, that's Y. Let's find it. Okay, so you can see now now mouse. Now it follows mouse, the cursor basically. Here we go. And and uh, <laughs> the keyboard and mouse. So that's it. Uh, that's how you find an input in GameKit. The thing is, uh, to you can't do uh, this in the file uh, this way. Okay, so you can't do this, uh, or maybe you can. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> in the first versions of GameKit, you can't bind input at top level. So if you do this, if you <laughs> did this in the old versions of GameKit. The, it won't bind because there's no running application and it can't capture the input. Actually, I think I might have fixed that because people were confused why, why you can't do that. Maybe I just fixed that. Let's see. I need to restart the image completely to be sure that no state, to be sure the feature works basically. <laughs> restart this. Oh, why is that? I need to find blast now. Getting better at this. Um, we just load our study group. We start it immediately, and then we just in package. No, that's not that package. Okay, sorry, uh, in package. Uh, in. in package. Okay. So we start move into pack. What? It's because you're not in um, the uh, oh, study group. Oh, yes. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, that, that, yes. I guess that's the downside of local nickname and the upside at the same time. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I should do this the other way, actually. Okay, let's do this. Okay, that should work. Okay. So we have our image with what? X. Okay, it's not bound. I didn't figure that, I guess. Well, so you need, I don't think you, need, you um, sorry to interrupt, I don't think you added yeah. the code to bind no, yeah, the yeah. keyboard. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually save it. That's the problem. <laughs> I just <laughs> save and saved it. Let me just, oh yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> sorry. Okay, here we start. Imagine we're starting, oh, okay. Plus, 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 plus. Let's go. Oh, yes, yes. I, I had an error <laughs> uh, that you can't find input un until GameKit starts. So how do you work around that? Uh, what you do is GameKit have several hooks into application lifetime, so you can load resources, you can unload resources when you're stopping a game. Uh, Let's do this. I'll show you how to do that, basically. So we should define some def methods. Uh, post initialize. Initialize, yes. Uh, invoke when your application is started and everything is initialized. Well, this is the name suggests. Uh, so everything is loaded and you can just do whatever you want with the resources or anything. Okay, so you just specified on our study game, study group game. And what? Uh, ah, and you can bind input here because the application is started and now you can bind all of the stuff. So bind cursor. I hope I pronounced it right. Right? Okay, so we compile that. 
Uh, we try to load it again. Uh, uh, what I did? Okay, what now? <laughs> okay, come uh, start it again. Save it this time. Yeah, probably. Uh, okay. So, so it's bound on the application start, basically, or game start. Uh, you can customize your uh, your instance like we have. I have a Forge app kit by default. <laughs> Don't ask me why, because actually game kit is based on app kit, which is based on Forge. Uh, it's, it's better to not to go into that rabbit hole. Uh, Trivial game kit is not a high performance uh, thing. Again, it's it's made for simplicity, so it. Has, it, it has suboptimal performance, but it's completely okay for jump game and maybe for simple games that you, you know, want to sh wanna, wanna sell, maybe. Okay, so, uh, what do we do? Ah, so I can name it like I want, report name, it's called, I guess. Hopefully, title, it's title, I hope it's title. Uh, so it's study. Okay. You can. You, I hope this works. So you sh you evaluate uh, evaluate this, and the window is updated in real time. Yay! So you probably won't see that, but there is study group game title now. Uh, you can provide different height and width um, for width. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, let's do this. Viewport height. Oh, well, that's yeah. That's not strings. Okay. Uh, that, but that's not really visible too much. Maybe, maybe a rectangular window. Okay, now you see it's rectangular. All happening in runtime. Just, just experiment with whatever you want. It has some different other options. You just can check them out. The documentation, and that pretty much it for API to make a game. And now, how to share that game with people without? Is there any you know, for um, like? Um, I guess I should say, for lack yeah. of a better term, collision detection. No. No. Okay. So, no. so, so you gotta handle like whether two sprites overlap yourself. Yes. Yes. Okay. You, you do almost everything here yourself. So basically, what GameKit is it, again? It, it's not a game engine. It's a right. framework. Framework. You can build upon it. You can can build engine upon it. Uh, very uh, but, processing like. Hmm? Sorry. It's very. It's very much like processing them. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah, kind of, kind of, yes, uh, yes. So okay, cool. there's a like low level. Well, it's not really too low level, but it's like lowish level API, and that you can build. From. So GameKit actually have uh, plugins that um, that provide more high level API. Like it have a state machine. You just can load the plugin. State machine plugin and use uh, state machine within a game kit. You can use um, uh, you can use post processing. Uh, it has a plugin for post processing. Uh, you just need to you know uh, add add this to dependencies, uh, set up some things, and you have a post processing in game kit. You can do all this stuff, but uh, game kit itself is a really 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 basic simple API to uh, make basic things, basic things. Okay. Uh, so how do we deliver that? How do we send that to our users? Uh, there's really just one method, like one routine to do that. Uh, it's contained in a different system, which is called Trial Game Kit Distribution. So we go in our REPL uh, let's just maybe add a bit more, okay. Font to it, quick load, trivial game kit distribution. Okay, it's loaded. So what's what gonna happen next? Uh, 
let me type that. Game kit distribution. It's a package. Uh, have only single. Okay, that's spoiler. It has only a single function. It's called deliver. Uh, and it has some <laughs> signature. Okay, so you provide a system name to system as the ASDF system to build your game from. So our system, our ASDF system name is. Let me just I remember this. Just show you. So the system study group. So we provide that. Okay, let me just bring this a bit down. Uh, we can just copy paste right here. Uh, then we should provide like GameKit by default doesn't know what to start, wh where to start. There's no main function. The, the entry point into your game is your main class, which you define through dev game. So we go back to dev game, where is the dev game? Let's see it. So we go study group game, it's that. Uh, we already in package, but I'll just, okay. We already in package, so this um, symbol is known. Actually, let me just, uh, just in case, show you the full name. People sometimes get confused. They invoke deliver in a different package and can't find their uh, class name in a different package. That happens. So study group, it's our package. Uh, it's full name of the symbol, which is, it, it's private, so we, so, so we should access it through double columns. Okay, so we provide that, and that should be basically it. Uh, yeah, it has some options, but it shouldn't bother us right now. So we go to our our uh, directory with our game. Hopefully, what should happen next is uh, it will assemble all. The, let's just just in case. Uh, actually, let let it run it. Let it run running. Uh, what sh it should create a directory with all assets, the resources, libraries uh, put into there, which we can distribute them to our users. So let's, let's just try. Okay, something is happening. Okay, it does a lot of stuff. It was really, it's, it's really unfortunate how <laughs> how it's actually not that simple to distribute a game. Okay. It was, it was. Now it's super simple. You see, it's just one method. <laughs> okay, let's refresh that. Okay, we see build. What's what there? Oh, okay. Plus, 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 plus. So it's some files and actually study group uh, is our package we can distribute amongst our users. But uh, Deliver works or builds a distribution only for your current architecture. That's the limitation kind of, limitation and not. Because uh, cross compilation is really hard. Uh, the other way to distribute would be, you know, uh, sharing a source file, uh, sources, and uh, Asking user to load it into his BCL or having a, or whatever implementation. Okay, so what this does, it compiles, it calls say list and die. Uh, the, so the I, I have a, I have a couple of questions actually. Um, when you call okay. deliver, uh, yep. how did you like number one? How did you do it um, with the slime thread running? Uh, what normally that's actually, not possible. Yep. Uh, the the thing is, it actually. Uh, I just got the bug about something that, affect, that affected, okay, bug that relates to this uh, delivery mechanism. So what it does, it calls the Lisp, the another Lisp in the background. Okay, and then that answers my second yeah. question too, because uh, I was wondering why it didn't actually save Lisp and actually die. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it actually loads your game in the do this list that's loaded somewhere in the background. Do all kinds of stuff and dumps it. Uh, it actually uses you 
IOP dump image, I think, rather than directly using Save Lisbon Die. But yeah. That's it's pretty useful. You can keep the game running while you do that. Yeah. Then. Very yes. nice. Yeah. Okay, so we have a Z zip file. It's actually just uh, the, the, the study group is a packed version of it. Uh, oh, oh my god. I need to do this every time now, I guess. Um, so, uh, study group is our um, executable, uh, lib, lib, lib uh, folder, <laughs> not folder, it's a directory. The directory contains all those, uh, what's this? Plus, 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 plus. Uh, all of the, and some, I need it actually to put there, uh, some libraries, native libraries that needed to run the game. Uh, so glad is for loading uh, graphics contracts. Libgel fell is for uh, uh, is for creating a window and listening for input. Um, NLVG is for drawing uh, hard marks accelerated drawing of vector graphics. Yeah, basically vector graphics. Yes. Uh, Libnuclear is actually for UI. I didn't. Because it's that, that's a very on, complex topic. <laughs> it's a better we left that out. <laughs> okay, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, open all for sound, delete sound file for cloned sound. Uh, whatever sound files. So you're using G libglfw, but you're not actually um, leveraging uh, the graphics capabilities for window management. You're using a separate library for that, or did I misunderstand what nuclear no, is no, no. providing you? G, no, uh, ah, nuclear is, uh, okay, it's, if you're interested in what nuclear is, it, uh, it's, um, it's system independent or system agnostic UI library. Uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't have a graphics code. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, it's just logic. And you okay? It, it actually contains that you can. It's underdefined. It's C C library. It's underdefined. You can exclude that. So uh, you can use only logic part of it and provide your own rendering routines. Got it. Uh, so UI is rendered through Nuclear using actually Podge Canvas, which is using NanoVG. So Nuclear is rendered through NanoVG, actually. Okay, that's context of it, indeed. So. <laughs> Uh, let's just forget for a second. Uh, what happens underneath uh, Trivial Game Gate is really nasty thing. Uh, but it works. It all works. I don't need to know. <laughs> uh, okay, and as you can see, in assets, there is no images. There is no... Ah, we, we didn't start it yet, right? So let's just close this one, maybe. Let's go to our well, as projects. And uh, study group. We have a build directory. Build directory. Let's go there. We don't need to go there actually. The study group. Uh, what? Ah, yeah, okay. Because it's a CD. Let's CD there. And here we go. Study group. Our uh, executable. Web study group. So hopefully this all works. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So we started from. Okay. Let's have our. So it's our game. It's an executive file. Uh, but as you can see, uh, there is no images or OG files uh, there. Uh, how that works. So, as I earlier mentioned, uh, GameKit uh, serializes all those resources uh, into a custom, custom resource format called BRF, it's actually Polish's format, to, to distribute all those resources without uh, needing to copy-paste or how, somehow handle logistics of moving resources or packing and packing them around. So in Trivial Game Kit, just define image, path to image, and everything is done for you. If we go into those ones, um, Okay, this bullshit here of empty, so it's just uh, files because reasons. And 
here we go. That's actually file that includes our resource in some format. It's actually not org and not uh, it might be PNG. So it converts them so in runtime it can be easily loaded and used faster, basically. So it prepares the resources for usage. So here we go, it's a uh, next bunch of uh, bytes is uh, actually our audio, which is some sound. Uh, if you remember, we let's switch switch to game. What study? No main. Uh, some sound. So here are our some sound. Uh, basically, all bytes are for it. And somewhere here should be what, what now? Uh, image. Some image. Some. Oh, I was some. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here it is. So, uh, next kind of bytes is uh, for our image. Well, that's how GameKit handles resources, basically. And you can send this archive to your friends, basically. And if they have, <laughs> if they have uh, 64 bit x11 based linux system <laughs> uh, not older than something 2016 then they can play that maybe 2014 yeah because that's binary stuff uh, if, and that, that uses uh, certain c libraries and if your c if the target c library is too old or yeah too old basically you, you won't be able to run that. It's really hard topic. We shouldn't really go into details here. Uh, there are some advanced stuff you can do to deliver your game uh, for Windows and Mac OS X. Uh, if you want, I can share how to do that right now, maybe. Or you can check the documentation. So, guys, that's it for GameKit, how to use it, uh, its API, uh, how to deliver a game uh, with the game kit. If you have any questions, I'm glad to answer that. Any questions? Or you are <laughs> that amazed? You, uh, it, <laughs> it looks pretty straightforward. I mean, yep. it's now I'm uh, got to go and play around with it. Thank you for answering my questions regarding the one thing I had regarding sprites you answered already, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, then I can just peek into this advanced staff, uh, stuff. Uh, how to how do I share uh, GameKit games between different platforms? I'm using basically CI services, free, free CI services, like Travis, Travis CI. Um, yeah, Travis CI. Uh, that allow me to allow me to build a native distributed file for macOS and uh, Linux. So they provide build machines with needed architectures. You can request those, and that's how I'm building cross uh, like distribution for different platforms. So I'm developing Linux, then I'm just uh, uh, using configuration for those build machines to uh, build for target audience, basically target architectures. And FBRCI, FBRCI. That's another one that I am using this to build uh, Windows distribution distributions. Huh. Your so reason why. Happening. Sorry, I was going to yep. ask, is there a reason why Travis does Does Travis not support Windows? Um, uh, I think they, well, just they just don't have time, I guess. Uh, uh, they okay. have plans. They might have some, actually, support for Windows. It's just when I started, they didn't have support for Windows at all. I'm not sure they have right now, actually. Mm -hmm. There are, diff there are different providers of CI services. There are like Azure pipelines or something that have uh, all of those machines. It's just, I'm using exactly those because of, you know, we started with them. Right. 
look at it. Yeah. So you basically deliver on those, called deliver on those. Machines. Yeah, that's basically it. Cool. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I have a question for you. Yep, sure. Um, I'm sorry if you brought this up earlier. I might have missed it, but um, does the the distribution um, mm -hmm. process include um, uh, shared libraries that are brought in from other dependencies, like if I pull in? Uh, yes. Um, what actually happening? Uh, GameKit depends on Bodge, uh, CL Bodge. Uh, it's basically its whole dependency. And Bodge is a big framework, really big. It contains a lot of functionality that's not documented properly yet. Uh, and it has physics, it has audio, it has uh, graphics, it has 3D graphics, all, all of that big stuff. And it depends on some foreign code. Uh, and I moved that code into libraries. Uh, for example, I have a wrapper for several different libraries. For example, GLFD, G, uh, GLFW, GLFW. Uh, it's called, uh, quick load, it's, it's already quick loaded, but just, not just in case, show. Uh, but uh, GLFW. Uh, so that's the library. It's a wrapper around GLFW. It doesn't contain any references or links to uh, blobs, I call them, <laughs> to native libraries. So you can use your own from your system or compiled by you. But if you don't want to bother with that, I have a systems that contain pre-compiled libraries. For example, it's uh, we call it Podge, uh, I know it's called GLFBLOB. So that's the system that loads into your image the native libraries of my choice, <laughs> whatever I cho chose uh, for the wrapper to work. And what is this really? It's just a bunch of uh, compiled foreign libraries it's, uh, for Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac OS for 32 bits and 64 bits. And there is a system called <laughs> Base Blob. Uh, base Blobs. Base Blobs. They contain everything that specific blobs need, like C libraries, actually, all native dependencies, except for X11, because that's a hell of a dependency. So I assume you have a X11 installed to run a game or whatever. It don't provide base blobs for that. Uh, but some basic native dependencies of native libraries are included uh, into this base blob. And GLFW blob depends on base blobs, which means those are all loaded. Uh, together. And when you deliver, it, it just goes through ASDF dependencies, collecting all those blobs. I think, um, I think more so what he was asking is if he um, started like a, a brand new trivial game uh, package with, the, with their own ASDF system, and they depended on some uh, list, ah. binds, list bindings that aren't included in the bodge disk. When he goes and calls the liver, is it going to package that all up for users? No. no. Thank you. Sorry? Uh, that is that was my question. Ah, right? sorry. But I sorry. do believe I, his uh, his blog does mention on how you will do, how you could do that though. I remember uh, reading an article kind of. about that. Yes, that's really the article quite old. It still works, but I do it a bit differently at the moment. Uh, but no. It won't, if you have a custom, your, your own custom uh, blobs, <laughs> GameKit won't include them. Include them. So you need manually, manually, you not only need manually to put into in those libraries into 
output to directory, uh, you also need to load them into its runtime. So now, if you want your own parent libraries, uh, you DB doesn't have a you know provisions for that. You can use, I'm not sure if uh, GameKit uh, delivery is compatible with uh, Shinmera's uh, what's the name? build. How, how is it called? Deploy. 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 Yes. Deploy. Yes. So I'm not sure if those are both compatible. I didn't try. Maybe one day I just uh, replace deliver because deliver was uh, before uh, deploy was uh, deployed before it uh, got public uh, and I didn't have time to move on to it. Maybe maybe in the future deliver would actually call you know uh, <laughs> deploy and will collect all those your query and libraries. Well, thank you very much for a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you for being great listeners. Thank you so much. Uh, and thanks all of our uh, YouTube uh, viewers. Um, uh, and um, I wish you all the best on uh, the Game Jam happening right now. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Thanks.